us at Eternal Food Ministry, where we share the bread of life. We not only preach the gospel, but we help those who are in need of food assistance. We help people in emergency food needs from loss of job, death in the family, sickness, in between jobs, delayed paychecks, and other unforeseen circumstances. This is because we believe in providing for the physical to touch the inner hunger. Now, let's join Josephine Zion for the spiritual food on the Bread Broadcast. God bless you. Praise God, praise God, and let the people of God say amen, amen. It's good uh, to come back again to you, our viewers, our brothers and sisters, to share the word of God. God is always good. He is good. Today, we are going to uh, talk about the blighting bribe. Yes. Um, a, the case study is not somebody that that I like or any Christian likes, but um, we have to talk about our enemy who doesn't want us to succeed, who doesn't want us to be who God has called us to be. But before we start uh, exposing the, the, the enemy, let's pray first. Father, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us together again. Oh Lord, we present ourselves at your feet. Father, look down from heaven and remove every scale from our eyes. Let us see from your perspective, oh Lord, and give us the heart of understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Like I said, the topic is the blighting bribe and the case study satan the devil the dragon you see uh so let's quickly take off from john 8 44 that would be a foundation uh bible text it says this is jesus speaking to the pharisees you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Now that's coming from the mouth of Jesus about Satan. I don't think there's any more room to doubt who the devil is let's go to second corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 to 4 second corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 and even if our gospel is veiled that is this bible this jesus that we preach if it's veiled covered to some people it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age, that is another name for Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So from those two Bible verses, we have seen some things about our enemy, Satan. He is the God of this age, it blinds people's eyes. It makes them not to want to listen to the gospel. It makes them not to want to understand the word of God. He's a liar. And the only resource he has is lies. You see? And when he speaks, Jesus said he's not capable of telling the truth. No. See, human beings, they can twist the truth to a lie. The devil doesn't have that ability. When the devil opens his mouth, he's speaking lies, straightforward, lies, because he doesn't have the capability to twist the truth to a lie. He's a liar, you see. So what is a blight or blighting? A dictionary many says, blighting or blight is an agent or, or action 
that harms or ruins the value or success of something. Sounds like the devil, huh? A condition or result of harmful or ruinous action. If you are looking at the pictures that we have on, on our screen, that is a watermelon, I believe, and a leaf. See what uh, bacteria and blight have done to those two. You wouldn't take that if you were offered, right? And that's exactly what the devil does. Now, what is a bribe? Dictionary meaning says, a bribe is to persuade someone to act in one's favor, typically illegally or dishonestly, by a gift of money or other inducement, all right? Bringing it uh, closer to home, what then is a blighting bribe? A blighting bribe is a ruinous persuasion from an external source to act illegally or dishonestly toward a situation or in a situation. That's all the devil is out to do, to induce you, to induce me. So we can act dishonestly against God. So we can act illegally against the laws of God. That's all. It's a destroyer. How did bribery start? Now, there's no bribery that is good. Uh-uh. So how did it start? There's a story in the book of Isaiah. We won't have time to go there today. Uh, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, verses 1 to 19, there in Ezekiel, Satan was referred to as the symbolism of the king of Tyre. And in uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 14, uh, Satan was called Lucifer, the son of the morning, in that Isaiah. So the devil was made with nine stones, topaz, uh, onyx, uh, gold, turquoise, uh, berry, I believe. Um, I can't remember the other ones. But nine. And if you agree with me, those are beautiful stones. So he was an archangel before God leading worship, according to that story, in the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel. So his beauty got into his head. So he lied to himself. That was the beginning of his problem. So he thought, oh, I'm so beautiful. I, I can take over from God. Unfortunately for the devil, he forgot he was created. He is not the creator. So the creator, our God, kicked this prideful uh, being out of heaven, into the second heaven. You see, and ever since, he has started selling his bribery of lies. That was the beginning of bribery, people. And so he showed up in the garden of Eden. Of course, he sold it to Eve. And Mama Eve, she took it and she ran with it. And then Adam. And everybody has been in trouble ever since. Unless you come to Jesus Christ. So right now, Satan is spending the little time he has between now and the time Jesus is coming to give out as many blighting bribes as possible. I'm telling you. So how does Satan's blighting bribe operate? How, does it, how do you recognize when this bribe is being offered to you? How do I recognize when Satan is trying to bribe me? Number one. He operates, Satan's blighting bribe operates by beguiling people. It beguiles. The devil is the world's greatest con artist. Okay? If you're looking for a con artist, remember the number one is Satan. He originated it. He started it. Satan always presents his mess, M-E-S-S, -S, his mess, in beautiful packages. I told you in our last lesson, if you are looking for an ugly devil, you're not going to find one. Because really, God made him with nine beautiful, expensive stones. 
So you are not going to find an ugly devil, but his beauty has become blemished. So devil comes in beautiful packages, but inside the package is, is a, is a uh, bunch of mess. By presenting or bombarding people with the pleasures of sin, rather than the putrid consequences of sin. Satan's advice is the wrong voice that speaks loudest in the head. If he's telling you, oh, you may not have another chance, you better do it now. Have you seen those commercials? They will tell you, order now. Call now. Order now. That's the way the devil operates. He will tell you, you better do it now. The aim is to disallow the individual to be able to think of the consequences of their actions. The result is, if the individual follows that loud voice in the head, they turn a blind eye to their sins, even though in their heart, they know what they are doing is wrong. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 3, verse 4 to 5, Genesis, and you will see how this loud voice uh, operate. Then the serpent, that is the devil, said to the woman, Eve, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You see, the devil presented every good part of that temptation, the pleasures to Eve. Did you see anything like, are you getting trouble with God for disobedience? Oh, no. So anytime you are presented with everything that is beautiful about a situation, the snake is in the corner. Be careful. Oh, this is going to happen. It's beautiful. Is this, is that. There's nothing to worry about. Be very careful. Because the creator of, the, of heaven and earth has created the world in a balanced way. There's always pros, you always have pros and cons to every situation. So if all you are being bombarded or presented with is just the beautiful part, mm -mm -mm. the devil is trying to beguile you, to entice you. The Bible tells us to resist the devil. Not to strike a conversation with the devil. If you converse with the devil, the devil will convince you. I'm telling you. That's how the devil defeated Eve. Eve started a conversation with the devil. Don't converse with that voice in the head. Send it packing in Jesus' name. No, I don't want to listen to you. Go in Jesus' name. You see, the voice will stop. To think, now this is what some people say, I know what I'm doing. Or, I have control over this. Have you seen some people like that? I see them all the time. Or they say, I know when to stop this. You don't know when to stop nothing. You don't have the power. Those are the signs that someone has been beguiled by the devil. When someone is saying, I know I can stop this. I can stop it whenever I want. I, I, I have control of this. I'm not going to go beyond this level. Look at that individual and say, the devil has got you. The enjoyment of sin is the strength for the endorsement of sin. If anybody is telling you that uh, a particular sin is not so bad, go and check them out. It's because they are finding pleasure in that sin. They don't want to let go of the enjoyment. The day they are tired of their sin, the day their eyes are open, you will see that it will be repulsive to them. You see? So don't forget that. That the enjoyment of sin is the strength for the endorsement of sin. Moving on. Another way the blighting bride operates, it, it defiles. You see? I thank God for a senior pastor, uh, he, the, the, the images he, he gets for me every week for, for illustration. I so much love the, the images we have on the screen because you can see how that uh, blight started 
on one part of that fruit and it began to go around. Same thing on the leaf. Satan defies every area of people's lives through the domino or ripple effect of one sinful act. That's it. One thing, you do one thing, forget it. It's going to touch every area of, of, of that person's life. That's the devil for you. Satan's evil gift of sin has tentacles, you see, that we extend beyond its primary target area. It will permeate to other areas of someone's life. As a result, the pre-existing premium quality of such an individual is greatly reduced across all areas of life. You see, uh, when I was preparing this um, lesson, the, the, uh, uh, the story of a politician came to my mind. I'm not going to drop names, uh, but it's, a, it's everywhere on the news uh, when it happened. Uh, because we are not, this program is not to shame people. This program is to call shamed people to come to salvation. Okay? So no, no, nobody is, um, is better than, uh, uh, than the other. It, we are all covered by the blood. You see, if you come to Jesus, it will take away your shame. So I'm not going to go into details of the individual's personality, but this politician did something really bad, very bad in the 1970s. And uh, the, the individual that was the victim um, asked for money. So this, this politician began to pay off. He paid, I believe, uh, $1.8 million, you see, and eventually, the case was um, busted open anyway by, by, by the FBI's, and um, they found out what happened. As I'm speaking to you right now, that individual is in jail, the politician. And he was really up there before. But it got so bad, I mean, his plug was removed from, 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 from his office and all that. You see, now he's in jail. He did one thing, one bad thing. How many of us have done so many bad things, you see, that it's just by coming to Jesus that many of us are not in jail or many of us are dead, you see. And uh, it's like we look good, like we are, we are beautiful people, we are perfect people. No, it's just because by the free gift of salvation of Jesus, that we not look radiant, you see. But that politician, I pray he meets Jesus in his jail. But his social life was destroyed. His financial life was destroyed. You see, his political life, just one thing. And everything around him, the tentacles spread, the blight. You see, that's the work of the devil. It defiles. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 15. And this is really beautiful, this Bible passage, because it shows exactly how those tentacles work. It says, then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. You see, it started with lust. And if you give in to your lust, it will get pregnant. And when the baby comes, not real baby, you see, it will give birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, when you have done what you are not supposed to do, it, bring, it brings forth death. That is how the devil defiles. It will start with something small, something little, but it's not going to tell you that it's taking you down to the pit, to the death place. Remember, this enemy is vicious, is treacherous. To receive one sin, from Satan is to receive many ills from Satan. Let me say that again. To receive one sin from Satan is to receive many ills from Satan. Always remember that. Always. So we've seen two ways uh, that Satan's blighting bribe operates. Number one, it beguiles, that is, it tells you all the good things, but it's not going to tell you the consequences. 
Then secondly, it defies. It starts from one small spot and then it snowballs. Okay? Let's go to the third one. It belies, you see. At the heart of every blighting bribe is the ability to deliberately misrepresent things. If you are looking for the maker or the creator of fake news, look for the devil. Satan started fake news, okay? Satan operates in this way by presenting a lie as the truth. Have you noticed how fake news operate? Something that never happened. Somebody will sit down and write it and even put some uh, statistics and they will spread it on the internet. I'm telling you, that is the work of the devil. It may also involve threats and fear of the unknown. That is how the devil belies people with his evil uh, bribe. Satan has caged many lives by telling them, listen, that the sinful lifestyles they live can never be changed because that's their genetic makeup. You see, the Bible says every good gift comes from God. If there's a defect of sin showing in a life, God didn't create that. Now, I'm not talking about the deaf, the blind, the mute. Uh-uh. God takes responsibility for that. He said, I have made the blind. I have made the mute. They didn't become, they were not born blind or mute because they sinned. No. They have their own purpose in life too. But when you see somebody living against the, 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 the natural way that God has created people to live, and they say, this is my genetic makeup. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Let me give you an example. I used to be very, very angry. I'm talking some bad anger that you, you can blank out, okay? And it's horrible. I used to tell my husband, this is who I am. Deal with it. But that was a lie from the pit of hell. Oh, no. Because I seen it go down the bloodline from my father's side. So I believed that was it. Then I became a child of God. And the Lord said, that's not how I made you. Have you seen a day old baby getting angry? Huh? And I began to pray. And the Lord showed me the demon of anger. I'm telling you, it's ugly. And I began to pray against that thing. And God delivered me. You see, a lot of people, they are so caught up in their, in their family problems. And they, they will tell you, that's the way it is for them. No, God didn't make that. No. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. James 1, 13. It says, remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. What that is saying is, because you cannot tell God, God, I want you to steal. Jesus, I want you to rob a bank. Can you tell God that? Huh? So if it's impossible, for God to rob a bank or to shoplift from, uh, from Walmart, God will not bring a temptation before you to go and steal. No. Anything that is trying to induce you to do wrong is not from God. It's from the devil. That is what that book of James is telling us. Satan can also present lies as the truth by telling that individual, you are better off to keep your secret because the consequences will be too much to bear. I hate that. The devil is a liar. Okay? You are not a greater sinner than I was before Jesus saved me. Okay? So don't let the devil tell you, oh, if everybody hears this, you are, you are done. You are kaput. No, the devil is kaput if you confess. That's the old lie that is telling people, 
No sin is too big that God cannot forgive. No. The only sin that God cannot forgive is if you don't confess. That's it. And I think that's common sense, right? So Satan belies people. To believe in Satan's lies is to, is to ingest Satan's bile that blights. To believe in Satan's lies is to ingest Satan's, lie, uh, Satan's bile that blights. The last way that Satan's brighten, uh, blighting bribe operates, it destroys. A bribe giver never does so out of the goodness of their heart. Oh no. And it's not because they love the receiver of the bribe. No. Every bribe giver is counting on the, uh, the, 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 the love or the, 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 propensity, the propensity of the receiver, the proclivity of the receiver to have some knack of greed or covetousness. That's all. That is all. A bribe giver always hopes the intended receiver will have a knack for greed or covetousness that will make the bait irresistible. That's what the devil is looking for. He's just looking for that greed, for that covetousness in you. So Satan goes to everyone to tempt them. Don't think that Satan is only tempting you. Satan tempted Jesus. Can you believe that? <laughs> he tempted Jesus. So he's tempting everybody. Christians, Muslims, uh, non-Christians, pagans. He's tempting everybody. Because he's looking for that small spark of greed or covetousness that he can hook his bait to. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 14. And I've got to run. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. What that Bible passage is saying is, listen, if you don't like to smoke, the devil will not test you. Up. He doesn't tempt. The devil tempts. The devil will not tempt you with cigarettes. If you don't like women, the devil is not going to bring women to you. As in, I'm saying like, uh, having extra marital affair. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not talking about, about well, kind of sexual uh, perversion. No. But if you are if you are a, 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 a man, a married man, and you don't have time for all that mess, praise God, the devil will not come to tempt you with that. But if the devil knows that you have weakness for money, hello, it's coming. The devil will tempt you at your point of weakness, where you are soft. That's what that Bible passage is saying, to want to destroy. So in order to stave off satanic onslaught, we need to watch and pray concerning both our strengths and weaknesses, as the devil is a master at manipulating things. Ephesians 5.15 the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15. It says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. You see, that's a great admonition, right? Satan uses people's weaknesses as his entrances. Don't forget that, please. Satan uses people's weaknesses as his entrances. So how does the blighting bribe operate? It beguiles, it defiles, it belies, and it destroys. Now there is good news to all this bad news about this our enemy. And the good news is, as bad as the devil is, look at that watermelon and the leaf. You can't do anything to change it, right? It's bad, it's bad, but not with Jesus. I love my Jesus. When it comes to Jesus, Jesus says it's reversible. Oh yeah. Because he made us. He is the creator. So he says it's reversible. As bad as the operations of the blighting bride are, 
and as devastating as its consequences can be, it is totally, are you ready for this? Totally reversible. First John chapter 3 verse 8 is one of the best Bible verses in the Bible that I love. It says, he who sins is of the devil. That is, you are deliberately sinning every day, every day, every day. It says, if you are in that habit, you are of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, that's the devil's destroyer right there. The Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. How can you reverse this? Isaiah, Isaiah 1, 18 to 19. And I'm trying to rush now. <laughs> Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet. Scarlet is super red, folks. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool that is perfectly white. If you are willing, okay, and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That is, you will eat the good of the obedience. So it's reversible, but you have to be willing to give up your sin. You have to be tired of, that, of receiving that bribe, and you'll be willing to obey Jesus Christ. The effects of Satan's blighting bride are totally reversible in and through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus came to save because our lives were at stake. You see, our lives were at stake of hell and really tied up on the stake of the devil. Because before Satan takes anybody to hell that follows him, he's going to make their lives on earth hell. A living hell before taking them to eternal hell so really our lives were if you're a child of god your life was at stake of destruction eternal destruction before you gave your life to jesus and at the stake of the devil i'm telling you but jesus saved us hallelujah so how greatly have you been deceived huh how badly have you fallen how wrongly do you feel about yourself listening to me right now? The height of Satan's deception in your life, the distance you've traveled on the wrong road, and the depth to which you have lived against God's holiness, you ready for this? All that qualify you for Jesus' savings, saving grace. That's exactly what qualifies you for salvation. Okay? Jesus knows the craftiness of the devil. Oh yeah, he, he does. And the Lord also knows our vulnerability to commit sins due to the compromised DNA passed down to us by Adam and Eve. You see? That's why Jesus came to save us. From the slavery of sin. He knows the devil is, he, he, he is such an old ancient enemy. And we don't know as much as he does. But with Jesus, we can overcome the devil. You see? That's why Jesus died. To give us the power to say no to sin. Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If you say, Joseph and Zion, I'm a super bad sinner. You are the candidate, okay? That's why Jesus died. Pastor Roger said, and I love him, he said the church is the only organization where you have to admit you have been bad before you are admitted into that organization. You see? If you want to join any organization, if you say you are once a terrorist, uh, once a pedophile, once a molester, they would say, oh, no, 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 we don't want you, right? But the church, the organization of Jesus Christ, the body of, of believers is the only organization where you can say, I've been a child molester, a, a, a pedophile, a polygamist, or whatever, and 
It's like, come on in, come on in, join us. Isn't that beautiful? No mountain too high, no pit too deep, and no ocean too wide that the love of Jesus will not climb, descend, or cross to get you out of Satan's web. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You are not far to go. He's calling you now. But the question is, are you tired of receiving Satan's blighting bride? Huh? Are you tired? Are you sick of your sin? When you have finished committing that sin, do you feel yuck? Do you feel ugly? Do you feel bad? Then, if you are tired of Satan's blackmail, telling you, I will tell, I will tell everybody about what you do, if you are tired of that blackmail and you are tired of his molestation, listen, click to my top left corner of the screen. It will take you to want to know Jesus page of our ministry. And there we explain in simple terms the meaning of salvation and the prayer you need to say and what you need to do after that. Okay? If you are really ready, the Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you will, you will reap the fruit, the good fruit of the land. I pray that you are tired of Satan's blackmail and molestation. Click now. Okay? Thank you, Father. For brothers and sisters who have already been saved, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for exposing the enemy of our souls. Lord, even I, I join my faith with my brothers and sisters right now, and we pray for those who are going to that uh, webpage of Want to Know Jesus, that Holy Spirit, you will give them the light of, of Jesus Christ, that they may see and understand what the salvation process is all about. And Father, save them, we ask. Add them to your church. And Father, we pray for ourselves that we will not fall away. You will uphold us to the end. The spirit of disobedience will not find its way into our lives. Help us, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week. If Jesus has not split the sky open. <laughs>